Today, BJ Parthasarathy, the business category leader of PD Ventures, is joining me on Inside Insights. BJ is spearheading The Rock, or the Radiology Operations Command Center. The Rock is an incredibly exciting new proposition from Philips Precision Diagnosis, one aimed at multi-site, multi-vendor, and multi-modality virtualized imaging operations. That's a mouthful, but in short, BJ and his team have flipped the tables on teleradiology. In the teleradiology world, images are created anywhere in the world and can be delivered and interpreted from anywhere else in the world. What The Rock does is take this beyond the image delivery and interpretation. They have created the ability to run an MR scanner in Bangalore, for instance, from anywhere in the world. BJ, this is an incredibly exciting new approach to workflow optimization. Tell us a bit about your brainchild. Absolutely. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Truett. First, uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share my thoughts. Certainly an exciting proposition for us, right, for, for precision diagnosis, for Philips overall, also for our team, really because it has the potential, ROC has the potential to address some of the top pain points that our imaging customers are currently facing, right, around labor, operations, things that have been accentuated by the COVID crisis. So I can start off by giving an elevator pitch, uh, Dr. Truitt, and then we can delve deeper a little bit uh, in, into the podcast. Certainly, uh, Radiology Operations Command Center, ROC for short really enables our customers to uh, adopt a hub and spoke, a very scalable hub and spoke workflow for image acquisition, really enabling them to do virtualized imaging operations. As you said, it's multimodality, MR and CT to begin with, vendor agnostic, which is extremely differentiating for us, and really a highly secure and private collaboration platform that allows for virtual scanner access really enabling the teleacquisition of, of images. I really like your analogy to teleradiology because I believe this whole field of teleacquisition is still at its infancy. Uh, it is as new to us as it is to our customers. Really, we are co-creating this together. And I also think it will follow a very similar maturation cycle, not only in terms of technology, but in terms of acceptance, uh, practice rules. And, and I think it will it'll take both our customers and us really to co-create this new way of working. So very exciting for us. PJ, that's fantastic, and I love that you use the word co-creation. Yep. You know, now at Philips, we're on a journey towards a company-wide adoption of an entirely new way of thinking through the lens of solutions and integrated value propositions. And the fact that you're including the customer at the front end of the development of this is fantastic. We've just talked a little bit about what the technology does. Can you explain a little bit more the purpose behind this and really get into how was it developed? How did you deploy customer insights into this technology? Yeah, absolutely. This is a critical point for us. So as a startup within Philips, our group was formed and tasked with de-risking this proposition around virtual imaging or teleacquisition, right? How do we bring this business from ground up? And is there a ability for sustainable innovation in this space? That's, that was our mandate. In fact, in short, we're looking for what we call product market fit. So product market fit is essential for early startups like us. And so early on in the process, we had this intense collaboration with our customers. What do I mean by that? Even before we wrote a single line of code, we met with about 100 customers, right? really discussing what the biggest pain points were. So that's where the impactful pain points sort of bubbled up on top. So let me you know, list out what we actually heard about. This was about 20, I even remember 26 months ago. One is our, for customers being able to serve their imaging patients much closer to where they live and work. Right? It's a question of increasing access, um, uh, really increasing access to out-of-hospital imaging, which we saw quite a bit. The second problem is sort of a addendum to that in order to maintain this highly dispersed imaging or a diagnostic service line. The key problem that they were facing is, uh, one, availability of skilled staff. But more often, it was the variability of that skill set, which was a bigger problem for them. So there is almost like a bell curve in talent where many of their skills were skill sets were sort of skewed to the left. And they had about five to 10 percent of people who were skilled, but everybody else was, was uh, not as skilled in advanced imaging procedures. That was the second one. And the third one was, especially with this distributed system, customers were really struggling to maintain standardization 
how do I maintain command and control of quality, not only in my hub, but in every spoke of that network. So it doesn't matter a patient enters your main hospital or your satellite site, can I provide them with the same imaging quality and the same quality of service wherever they go? So that to us, Dr. Truitt, was sort of the North Star for us as we kept the, the customer insights. And in fact, as we developed this proposition for product market fit, we kept these things very close to us and figuring out what is that minimal viable product that needs to go out, but still has that customer insight first and foremost. That's fabulous, BJ. Thank you for going through this. The ROC is really the first vendor neutral radiology command center on the market, as you pointed out, yes. which means that hospitals can integrate it with existing technology and systems outside of Philips. Now, I, of course, don't understand why anybody would have an MR or a CT that's not a Philips, <laughs> but they do. Yeah. And so I know as a former chief of radiology that it's really important to be able to try to work in an interoperable environment. The techs need to be trained across multiple systems, and that really is a challenge. And so having multi-vendor as part of this really is differentiating for us. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. For us, I think you brought up the solution way of thinking. That's very critical for us in, in terms of building a true solution. We need to think from customer's perspective. And anywhere we go, we cannot expect a full Philips install base. Otherwise, you know, our solution is limited to pain points that they're experiencing only with Philips. But how do we go broader than that? In fact, when we have done this initial market research, but also very close to, we've also done a lot of these pilot studies, which we'll be love to talk about as well. The fact that we are multi-vendor, vendor agnostic is a true differentiating factor for us. Plus, we're also backwards compatible, Dr. Truett. The oldest scanner that we have brought online to the ROC is a 1998 Hitachi Oasis 1.2 Tesla. <laughs> there are still machines out there. People want to operate them, right? So how do we enable some of these things, backwards compatible, multi-vendor? That's a true differentiator for us as we really enable our customers to do virtual imaging operations. Well, for our listeners, this is really key to understand yes. that the what's in the field is what's in the field, and we have to deal with that. And uh, so to build this multi-vendor thing is really spectacular. Yep. So there's a lot of interest and a lot of need out there for this technology. I know that you're about to launch, but can you talk about some of the earliest success from RadNet? What can you tell us about either the simplicity or the complexity of how you set this up and how you train people to use it? Yep. Listeners who don't know, RadNet is the largest diagnostic imaging chain in the U.S. They have about 320 plus sites across the U.S. And in fact, when they started off, they said, look, one of my main goals is, you know, training of my junior uh, technologists. But then COVID hit and the complete use case turned out to be business continuity. How do I keep this scanner running? Even if I have a, a green MR technologist or junior technologist, can I help them from the command center? So today at RadNet, very happy to report there has been a command center running for the last six months in Manhattan and 77th Street. We are connected to 14 of their scanners. And we just installed another command center in Brooklyn this week and also installed a first Siemens scanner onto the Philips Rock this week as well. And we already have Hitachi and GE and Philips already connected to our command center. So again, great partner to work with the way they push us in a direction where we can make the product better, the solution better. And I think the customer intimacy, the ability for us to really deliver customer success has been very, very phenomenal and, and especially in the early stage for us. It's great. It's unusual for any industry or for any company to hit it out of the park right off the, the bat like this. And so yeah. it's really terrific. And and you talked about deployment. So I want to talk about that as well, because we really, as I said, customer development, product development, but also customer success is critical for us. But I think being a cloud first solution on HSDP is very critical for us to get this up and running from a deployment standpoint, ease and scale of scalability, right? You can, you can add 10 scanners to it or 100 scanners to it. And we have designed that platform from ground up to be uh, scalable, interoperable, and, and all those things go into also shows in the speed of deployment as well. VJ, that's really interesting. And as you know, there's a lot of interest in this in radiology. What about other ologies like cardiology and oncology? Yeah. Where do you see this fitting in in that regard? 
Yeah, other ologies and we can talk other modalities also, Dr. Truett, because one of the things that we have done from ground up, from a design and development standpoint, is to make the virtual imaging platform that powers the rock extend beyond MR and CT. The reason why we started off with MR and CT is because we did the customer research. The pain points were the loudest, right? That was that was acute pain points that we saw. But also, we are working very closely with the, the collaboration live team to see how we can bring a unified command center virtualized imaging workflow all as part of the radiology workflow suite. That is already as, as part of a road mapping exercise that we are currently undergoing. With respect to the other ologies, I'm, I, you know, we are still in the road mapping stage. What I would say is I would still want to go back to the drawing board, right? So what I think is critical there to understand what is the product market fit in those areas. The platform itself is scalable. There is not much of a rework that needs to be done at the platform level, but I'm looking forward to understanding what the most highly critical use cases are in the other ologies as we expand. You know, in thinking about what you've been focused on here, I realized that this is really nothing new for Philips. We've been doing the EICU and the like yep. on the other yep. side yep. way before this. And yep. we're finally bringing this to the imaging workflow. Yes. And it's huge in terms of the return on investment, particularly in light of COVID, where everybody is overworked and uh, there's all sorts of unemployment and uh, reimbursements going down and the like. So, VJ, this has been fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's really been an uh, incredibly interesting discussion. I think uh, I'm looking forward and I think everybody's looking forward to hearing more about uh, the difference that Rock is making in more and more healthcare organizations as they use it. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening. And VJ, thanks again for joining me today. Thank you, Dr. Truitt. It's been a pleasure. 